Hi guys, uh, welcome to GTN Abacus Learning. In the last session, we looked into frame elements where we modeled a frame with an inclined column with this loading condition and we obtained the reaction forces and displacements. Then we modeled it in Abacus and compared the results. And we found that the reaction forces and the displacements obtained by the Abacus and using the stiffness matrices were almost similar. Now today we'll move into one dimensional plane elements. So in this session we will develop an understanding of the finite element equations for the stress analysis of two dimensional solids subjected to external loads. Although in real life the structure may never be truly two dimensional, however analysts Researchers often idealize many practical problems into 2D in order to solve them efficiently and economically. Satisfactory results can be obtained by carrying out such analysis using 2D models. Problems may either be plain stress or plain strain problems. And likewise, we have to use either plain stress elements or plain strain elements to solve such problems. For example, let us say we have a rectangular section like this with some thickness. Let this be x-axis and this be y-axis. And let us suppose that this element has been subjected to forces along this direction, say Fy and along this direction fx if we want to model this as a 2d element then we can see here that the major stresses will occur in x direction and y direction therefore what we assume is that we can have rectangular section like this. This is our xy plane. And so we assume that our structural region lies on the xy plane. And the third dimension, which is this one, is negligible or is relatively small compared to its length and breadth. Under this loading condition, the stresses will occur in x direction and in y direction and in this cases we may also get in plane shear stresses however in the z direction there won't be any stresses so this type of modeling where the stresses in the z direction are zero is known as 2D stress problem. In this case, we use 2D stress elements. So when you see an analysis done and when you look at the results, if you find that your Z stress, the stress along the Z direction are zero everywhere, then it is an indication that in this analysis, you have used 2D stress elements. In addition to having in plane strains, we can also obtain epsilon z, which is very interesting. This strain in the z direction occurs because when this section is pulled either in this direction, on this direction, or in this direction, this element may stretch like this so when this element is stretches we'll see that if this was the initial thickness t then its cross section will thin down therefore you can see that they change in thickness and due to this there will be strain in the z direction this is obtained when there are no out of plane constraints preventing 
such thinning down of the plate under the in-plane loads. The key assumptions in the 2D stress problem are the stresses in the Z direction are zero and the in-plane stresses which are sigma x, sigma y and sigma xy are constant throughout the thickness of the element. Now let's look at another case, a dam like this. Compared to dimensions here and here, the thickness is kind of infinite. Uh, in this case, if you want to do a 2D analysis, so you can draw its cross section like this, you can apply loading like this, the dam, because of the water, we have a lot of material here that can stabilize this element and can prevent the straining along the z direction. So in this case, if this is x and this is y, in this case we'll obtain sigma x, sigma y, sigma xy and sigma z. However, the strain in z direction, which is this direction, is assumed to be zero. So this kind of condition is known as 2D strain problem. And in this case, we use 2D strain elements. The key assumption in this kind of analysis is that if we got a section here, let's say this is section one, and this is section two, the in-plane stresses obtained in section two will be equal to what you obtain in section one. Structures where you have a uniform cross-section throughout its length are known as prismatic elements. A 2D element is generally modeled or is defined by at least three nodes like this in XY plane. We can include other nodes as well like this and can have further elements like this inside. When these elements are loaded with certain forces like this then we have to obtain our stresses which will be in vector form sigma x sigma y and shear stress let's say this is tau xy and our in plane strains here strain is change in the length divided by the original length. You can look into your lecture notes and see how these are derived. Generally, in these elements, we may be interested in finding the principal stress along the principal plane. For example, if you have an element which is rotated like this, and it makes an angle theta p with the horizontal x-axis and then the stresses in this region can be sigma 1 and this one can be sigma 2 now the plane in which we obtain the maximum stress is known as the principal plane. Now to obtain this theta p angle made by the principal plane with the x-axis is obtained by using this equation here. And then your sigma 1 will be equal to which is the maximum principal stress and similarly minimum principal stress will be equal to sigma 2 which will be equal to 
this here minus this. So in this way you can obtain our maximum principal stress and minimum principal stress. Isotropic materials where in such material you will have the same physical property when measured in different directions then your stress is given by strain strain matrix or constitutive matrix times strain vector now this matrix here is obtained as elastic modulus by 1 minus Poisson's ratio square. This equation applies for plane stress condition, but for the plane strain condition, we'll have D matrix as this is for. and this one for by epsilon z equals to zero I also mean that you know, our shear strain in this direction and in this direction will also be zero similarly stress xz and stress yz will also be zero. Now we'll look into this strain vector and see how this can be obtained. Let us say that we have a triangular element which has three nodes and we can label this node in anti-clockwise direction, that's the first node second node, third node, we can label this one as x1, y1. Now here the field variable is displacement. So let the displacement in the x direction be u and y direction be v. So for this point if we look at its displacements we can say that the displacement occurring in the first node will be represented by u1 v1 similarly now you can see that this 2d element has 6 degrees of freedom u1 v1 u2 v2 and u3 v3 we can write our displacement vector as let's look at a point here let's look at this point here now this point can move somewhere here depending upon the loading conditions so this is initial position that's the final position now when you look at it we find that this point has displaced by a certain value u and certain value v in the y direction to reach at its final position. Now these values here u and v can be assumed to vary depending upon certain equations, certain polynomial equations. For example, generally you can assume that u varies linearly depending upon this equation a1 plus a2x plus a3y and v as a4 plus a5 x plus a6 y 
a1 to a6 are constants and we have to find these values so for node 1 we'll have u1 which will be given by a1 plus a2 x1 plus a3 y1 similarly v1 will be given by a4 plus a5 x1 plus a6 y1 similar goes for every node here generally speaking your ui will be equal to a1 plus a2 xi plus a3 yi and vi will be equal to a4 plus a5 xi plus a6 yi then what you can do here is we can write this in matrix form so our matrix equation will look something like now this can be written as now when you solve this you'll obtain where hi xij and yij are given by these equations we have our general equation as these ones here so you can write these in this form then we can substitute this a vector back into this equation here let's say this is our x matrix and we have our a vector like this then what we have here is i think i forgot to mention delta here the delta here is the area of the element we also know that strain will be given by ex will be given by du by dx epsilon y given by dv by dy and gamma xy given by dv by dx plus du by dy let's write this in vector form we'll get we can use this derivative function in here so derivative of this one depending upon x or dy and you can do derivative of this and then write it here let's say for example these terms here are constants therefore you can directly write it here so it will have a inverse matrix and then u vector v vector and then the x matrix here is equal to this one here so we have to do a derivative of du by dx so when you do that you get 0 1 0 and then 0 0 0 and dv by dy get 0 0 0 this is also 0 this will be also 0 and dy by dy will be equals to 1 so we we'll write it down here and then here dv by dx so when you do dv by dx you get 0 1 and 0 and du by dy we get 0 0 1 so we can combine this write it here now we have our strain equation for the given triangular section above if we substitute the values what we obtain here will be generally this matrix is denoted as B matrix so this will be equal to B matrix times of so this is how we obtain our plane strains and for the stresses stress vector will be equal to some matrix D times of now this is known as 
stress strain matrix here. If we are analyzing Lane stress problems, we use this matrix for D. And if we are doing 2D strain problem, then we use this. Now let us look at a problem. Let's say we have a triangular plate and let's say it is pinned at this point and at this point let's say the length of this element is 20 inches and this dimension is 10 inches we have load acting at this point that would be 300 pounds and this one also be 300 pounds we are given the plate thickness T as point two inches Poison's ratio as 0.3 which is generally used for steel members and modulus of elasticity E as 30 into 10 to the power 6 PSI now the problem here is to find nodal displacements and plane stresses. Let's solve this using the equations we looked into earlier. The first step here is to assign nodes to these points 1, 2, 3. I did this in clockwise direction. Let the degrees of freedom at this point be u1 this one u2 you can do it u1 v1 it's all right this one be u3 u4 u5 and u6 first we write our coordinates let this be x-axis let this be y-axis so node 1 will be 0 comma 0 then our node 2 will have a coordinate system as 0 comma 10 and node 3 will be 20 comma 10 so these are the locations in space of your vertices. The next step is to find your B matrix. So your B matrix is given by B1 equals to Y2 minus Y3 which equals to 0. This is x1 y1 x2 y2 and x3 y3 so y3 minus y2 will be equal to 0 b2 will be equal to y3 minus y1 so equals to 10 and b3 will be equal to y1 minus y2 which equals to minus 10 as you can see that this is kind of in a cyclic process you get y2 y3 y3 y1 and then y1 y2 so it is something like y1 y2 y3 something like this y2 minus y3 y3 minus y1 and then y1 minus y2 similarly c1 will be equals to x3 minus x2 which equals to 20 c2 will be equal to x1 minus x3 which will be 
minus 20 and then c3 will be equal to x2 minus x1 which will be equal to 0. So in this one what we have here is x1, x2 and x3 x3 minus x2, x2 minus x1 and then x1 minus x3 area of the triangle section is given by half of the determinant of 3 now this will be equal to there we go now we have our B matrix which will be equal to what I'll do here is I'll go to Excel and then put these values in we have our B matrix as this divided by minus 200 here now this is our B matrix and then we have to find our D matrix so our D matrix will be given by this equation here let's say this is E is 30 to 10 to the power 6 thickness is 1 2 and then we have our positions ratio as 0 0.3 so these are the values who are given so our D matrix you can write here and then we can just multiply this by this divided by 1 minus Poisson's ratio square so oops sorry now to lock these values in so to lock this in log this one in and then we get our matrix so this is our d matrix here and now we have to find our k matrix so third step will be to find our d matrix and then we have to find our k matrix now the k matrix will be given by t times delta which is the area times B matrix transpose D matrix B matrix so let us write this equation in Excel so let's write it here this will be equal to M M E L T bracket M M E L T this will be equal to B transpose so I'll write transpose Or B matrix multiply that by D matrix and then multiply that by B matrix again now we have to multiply this by area now let's see do I have area here no so I'll just write area to minus 100 inches square so let us multiply this matrix by area times thickness 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 times this let us expand this there you go now this is our stiffness matrix which will be in pounds per inch so fifth step we have to get our force vector which will be equal to stiffness matrix times of force vector F which will be equal to F1 F2 
five, six, and we have our displacement vector, which will be u1, u2, up to u6, we write here 0, 0, 0, 0, and this one we have to find out. And for the forces, we'll have reactions occurring here, and we have forces here. The force will be 300 and minus 300. So what I'll write here is 300 and minus 300. And now we'll solve it. We can find our displacement, which will be equal to u5, u6, equal to inverse of this matrix. multiplied by this one here, this vector. There we go. Now we have our displacements in inches. And now to find our reaction forces, which are these values here, what to do is we can just copy this write it here and then u5 u6 will be equal to this one this will be equal to this one and our forces here you can just copy this down here let's copy this down here forces will be equal to this matrix times this one here there you go now we have our forces in pounds now this is our displacement solution these are our reaction forces and these are the forces applied and now let's find our strain so the, our strain E is equal to B matrix times U matrix so let's multiply that We have our B matrix here. Multiply that by our U matrix. There you go. Now we have our strain. This is EX, EY. This is EXY, shear strain. This is our strain solution. And then to find our stress solution, stress which will be equal to D matrix here times of strain vector times with strain vector. Square, pounds per inch square, so or PSI. Now these are our stress values. This will be in x direction and y direction. And this will be our shear stress x, y. Now we can just model this in abacus and see what we get there. Now let's start creating our part here. So for this one, we go to parts, so triangular plate, 2D, deformable, shell, let's make this one as 100, okay, first we'll just have a straight line, let's make this one 20, zoom in a bit, and then our vertical part here which is 10 and then we have this part here so done that's our triangular plate then let's create our materials we have steel elastic this is 36 
point three. Okay. Sections. It should be homogeneous. Steel. Okay. And then let's assign this section to our element. Done. All right. Now let's go to our assembly. Let's bring this part here. I'll move this part to 0, 0. Let's go to step. This is static. Continue. Let's go to implementation. We can increase this to a higher value. This one can be 0, 0, 0, 1. This one can be 9. Okay. And then let's go to boundary conditions. So pinned. So this point and this point are pinned in our problem. So you can just select these values here. So these are pinned. And then let's go to loads. We have a concentrated load of 300. So load one, okay. So at this point here, we have 300 acting towards the right in the X direction and then minus 300 acting downwards, okay. So these are our forces here. Now let's mesh it, go to mesh, part, let's go to like mesh controls. Okay, let's go to structure, yep. For meshing, Abacus provides different types of elements. In this case, we'll be using 2D stress elements. So you can just go to mesh and then element type. You can select all of it, done. So let's go here. So Abacus by default has already selected plain stress for this type of problem. You can see it here. So you can just say, okay. And you can just see it. Let's say this is two inches, apply. Let's make it one inches. Okay. Now let's just mesh it. Yes. Now we have our mesh. Or you can just use different type of elements. Let's say free. And then mesh it. Let's see what happens. Okay, that's good. And now you can just save it. Go to field up request. So this is per step. Yep. Now let's create a job here. This is plain stress. Continue. I can either increase the processor to four. Okay. And submit it. Let's monitor it. Okay, all done. Dismiss. Let's see our results. So results. All right. This has been increased by a factor of 4.7. So let us take it back to one. One. Apply. Let's play this. Okay. Spending a bit. So first, let's look at our displacements. So displacements, U1. Okay, let's slow it down a bit. Okay. All right, let's go to the end. And uh, let's go to query, prop values. 
nodes and let's see this node here so this is going in x direction by 0 0.1 inches let's see what we obtained in our analysis hmm let's see what we get in the u2 direction let's click it here we get minus 0 0.4 inches nope it's actually moving upwards why is that let's go to mesh again now as you can see here that we have regarded this whole body as one element in our theoretical analysis let's see this this part let's just see it let's say 50 let's make this as one single element let's see what we get here so mesh it yes so now this is considered as a single triangle like we did in our analysis let's run this part let's see what you get okay so i'll make a new job this will be plane stress as one element okay let's submit this all right let's see what we get okay all done dismiss results is this one okay now we'll get one single stress all around let's see our displacement here okay now let's go to query probe values let's go to u1 so here let's click here what we are getting here is now 3.64 into 10 to the power minus 5. So let's see what we obtained in our theoretical analysis. I wonder why am I getting minus here? Maybe because see I have put area here negative, area is generally positive. So let's make it positive. Okay okay now this makes sense a lot of sense so this is going in in the right direction this is going downwards yep yep that should happen so let's look at our displacement solution i'm getting 0 0.00018 less and then from abacus so this equals 3.64 So 0 0.000364, right? Okay. Let's look at U2. Let's click on this one. So 0 0.000104. 0 0.000104. When I divide this by 0 0.2, our thickness, because that is given per millimeter, so we can divide this by this thickness. There we go inches and for this one we can just divide this by 0.2 and we'll get our displacement in the y direction all right this is for 0 0.2 millimeter sorry 0 0.2 inches and this is for one inches It means that applying the same force in 1 inch plate and 0 0.2 inch plate it is obvious that 0 0.2 inch plate will have larger displacement or will stretch a bit more than 1 inch plate so this relation is inversely proportional so for 0 0.2 inches we have to increase the displacement by dividing or increasing this by five times because this plate is thinner now we have our solution that matches to our problem here all right this is okay 
Now let's look at our forces, reaction forces here. Yes. So let's look at our RF1. This one here. That's minus 900, 600. So what I'm getting here is F3 is 900, F1 is 600. Yep, that's good. Let's go to reaction force 2, this one, 480 and 180. 480 and 180. Yep, that's all good. And then let's look at our stress. The stress. We can look at our stress in x direction, which is this one. Let's go to element and just click on it. That's 60. What I'm getting is 60 psi. So our solution here is 300. Which means that it will be 60 divided by 0.2. There you go, PSI. So let's look at our stress in the y direction, 18. So here it will be like 18 divided by thickness, 90 PSI. If you want to see stress in XY plane, you go to S12. That's it. Yes. Select it. That is minus 60. So this will be equals to minus 60 divided by 0 0.2 by thickness. So thickness here. PSI. And we can also see our strain values. Go to strain. Yes. So let's look at strain in direction. That is 1.82 minus 6. 1.82. That will be 1.82 times 10 to the power minus 6. And we have to divide this by thickness. This one here. That is our EX. From abacus, and let's look at our EY that is zero, that's all right. So this is zero EY. Let's look at our E12 minus 5.2 minus 5.2 minus 6 we'll divide this by thickness That's this one that is our shear restraint so this is from abacus so these values match up with what we have in our theoretical calculations Let's look at E33, it is zero, yep, because this is a linear problem. So this is our reaction forces, we can see our displacements, you can see U1 and U2. All right, so yep, this is how we model our 2D elements. If you have a section that is very long, then we have to go to mesh and then see different element types here you can select all of it if this one had thickness that was very long then we could have used our plane strain elements rather than using plane stress elements so just be careful I mean if you are doing some kind of pipe analysis pile foundation analysis or kind of like a cross-section analysis of a dam that has kind of infinite length then it will be better to use plane strain elements rather than using plane stress elements. So here we'll just see our linear motion rather than nonlinear effects here. All right, now this is what is going to happen in reality. So common, let's go to one, apply. Yep, this is going to bend like this. 
So if you look at our displacements, u, let's go to probe values again, nodes, let's click on this one, let's take u1, click on this, 0 0.1, here it will be 0 0.1, and then when you divide this by 0 0.2, what you'll get is inches so it will go around 0.5 inches rather than going 0 0.00012 so we can see here that while we are doing this theoretical analysis which is a linear analysis we are assuming it to be a one single plate element having three nodes if we assume our plate to have many nodes like this like this then our behavior will be different so what we're doing there is very very crude analysis this is it for today in our next session we'll start chapter 2 where we'll be looking into interactions between different parts there we'll try to model a shear connections from a paper and then we'll look into the experimental results as in the paper and then we'll try to replicate that in abacus if we can do that then we'll have much confidence over our modeling technique thank you for watching till the end please share comment and subscribe to this channel thank you